guys, welcome back to Seeds of B&G. All right, here we see it. I need to get in here and run the, um, run the hot wires back around inside of the pig pen. Maybe get the water, get everything back in there. But I may go for some pigs a little bit earlier than I was thinking, um, just to kind of get a mix of both worlds. Um, as far as what, what is it like to have pigs during the winter versus, um, versus the summer. I definitely don't want to do the, um, in the heat of North Carolina uh, in the middle of the summer, but I may try to pick up some piglets maybe in July, August time frame that'll kind of run me into the fall. Um, we'll see how that goes, but I just need to do a little bit of work out here and we'll be good to go. Maybe um, drill this bracing into the side over there, or on the side here. And then um, I need to get a tarp for this and, and get something to actually give support to get this back on top of that piece over there. But once, uh, once we get that going, I think we'll be good to go uh, for our pigs. Now, what's been keeping me really busy to where we just wasn't making videos and we needed to get some stuff done around here. Let me walk y'all over here. First, we have this big spot that used to be a big pile of, um, of just debris out of the woods there. We got it down, this is what I'm left with. Some of this came from the front when, um, when we had the trees cut out. I think this was part of the root ball. But we got everything burnt down here. I'm gonna, um, you know, hit this with maybe the tiller or the tractor or something and just kind of break up this big ball of clay. But that's, 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 this is what's left. Um, I need to still come in and chop this tree down here. I was able to get the tractor and get this log up on there. That way when I come through and cut, it will fall off instead of uh, pinch the, pinch the uh, chainsaw. But this is what I've been working on. I think it's gonna be a goat enclosure. I really don't know what it was. I woke up one day and something told me to build it. I say something, but I say the Lord, the Lord said go ahead and go ahead and build build the enclosure. If you build it, they will come. I still don't know what they are, but I'm leaning I'm leaning towards um towards goats just from where I've put this pen at. Um, I would say, if I was to do this again, that I would not use the um, this woven wire. I was able to scratch it, it's, it's tight, but the top, you can't really get the top tight, in my opinion, or it's not made for, uh, I don't know, I, I can't get it super tight. To me, the, the bottom is tight, and I went back today and reinforced it with rebar. Well, I put, I put rebar, um, oh, she's spraying water. I said, like, what is that? But um, put rebar down and pressed out against it just so it'll be tight. Um, if I start with the Nigerian dwarf goats, um, they're not known to push, you know, they're not gonna push like a pig anyway. Um, so maybe that's what I'm really comparing everything against, um, having stuff kind of pig strong. But all around, this is 25, 25 by 40, I think it is. So pretty big pen. You know me, I'm in the woods, so I'm checking, I'm checking for, <laughs> checking my steps, guys, I'm sorry. But in between every T-post, I do have um, rebar. And Alicia sent me a picture today of somebody in this area that had like a giant fox. To me it was giant, I ain't never. Oh, that is the neighbor's chickens right there. I didn't know what that was, sorry. I digress again. But in between every set of T-posts, I have a piece of rebar. And it, I got it kind of pushing out against, like I said, you can't really get the top too, um, too tight. But down, down below, um, it, it is really tight. Like this side is crazy tight. Um, so we should be good to go there. I need to come in here and cut this extra, extra piece off there. I may even um, just kind of 
pull it and then use the rebar ties to um, to close this up. It's like some, some wire twist that's really, really strong. So I may get those. Again, this is um, another piece of rebar that I put out here just to kind of tighten up this corner, make it tight as possible. Um, I haven't seen anything where people have complained about their goats digging. So hopefully... Sorry about that guys, the camera said I am too hot and I'm turning off. But, what was I saying? Um, I think I'm going first with Nigerian dwarf goats. I really want to do a meat goat. Um, but just trying to get the characteristics of a goat and stuff like that. Maybe I should start off small and then work my way up to a um, one of the larger meat goats. But I have seen people... Um, I have seen people that get their Nigerian dwarf goats processed and they eat them. Um, so it won't be a total loss there as far as the meat goes and trying to get meat. meat. But I don't know what I would do with all of the, um, all of the goat milk. Um, it was delicious. We had some at um, Old Glory Farms over in, I think they're in Wendell. But that was one of the first... Um, homesteads that let us come over and just kind of see how see how it's done they had a, um, a awesome system going on um, I think they had goats chickens rabbits um, pigs I'm probably missing something they got it had a garden but it was really nice seeing um, you know you, you got to get out into your community talk to people figure out how how the successful ones are getting it done. Um, hopefully you'll look up like I did and find some really nice families that um, are interested in more people in the community doing it, as well as more people being successful in the community. Um, I hate to be the, the doomsday guy, but if, if crap hits the fan, it's gonna be what do you have to barter with? What can you bring to the table? Um, the community is gonna be the one that, that takes care of itself and if you have nothing to bring bring to the table you know you're gonna be you're gonna be at the mercy of the pe of the haves so it's gonna be the haves and the have nots you you're gonna not have something but if you do have something to bring to the table you know that's where you could get the thing that you don't have hopefully I'm making sense and not talking in circles I do do that a lot but you know hopefully you get it you know hey uh, seeds B and G how can we get uh, two packs of bacon? Well, what do you have? You know, we have three crates of apples. Hey, that sounds like a good deal. Let's let's do this. But if, if you come to the, you come knocking at the door and you don't have nothing nothing to swap, you know, you're SOL. But here we go. Like I said, um, I may try to go ahead and I need to build build a shelter for them. Um, and figure out if you could nipple train them to like the, uh, the water like I did for the pigs. If so, I need to get that built up and get a feeder in here and shelter. And I'll be in the market looking for some Nigerian dwarf goats or no, who knows, I might find some, some meat goats somewhere. Um, before I do all that, I need to actually find a processor that's a little bit closer than the Piedmont one that I was told about. I, I, I was heard they do really good, but they are a um, a good drive away. I think someone was saying that they don't steal your meat. You got to be careful with some of the processors, especially if you're going to be um, processing meat for sale. You got to get it done at a facility. They're going to charge you, not an arm and a leg, but they're going to charge you a pretty penny. And then you got to make sure that you're getting your meat back. Cause some of them, um, you know, they take 10 to 20 pounds of your meat. So that's why I want to at least learn how to process all the food myself. Um, if, if we don't sell it, I would still love to um, package it up, vacuum seal it, whatever, get it in the freezer for our family. That's what this whole adventure for us was about. Um, just trying to see can we feed ourselves can we take care of ourselves as far as um, our nutrition and stuff like that um, getting better nutrition uh, nutrition in our bodies um, 
than what you're getting out of the grocery store. And then, especially at the beginning of COVID, stuff was scarce. You couldn't find stuff. Um, you couldn't find food in the stores. I wish I could figure out how to grow a toilet paper tree. I don't know if there's a such thing as that, but um, I don't know, maybe outside the day, we'll figure something out. But I remember, you know, you couldn't find certain foods, you couldn't find medicines, you couldn't find um, toilet paper, it was bad. And that kind of triggered me into, hey, we need to be able to take care of ourselves. Um, I actually just bought myself a ham, a ham radio. Um, which picks up FM channels, it picks up um, the news, picks up other uh, like-minded people that have their radio and can let you know what's going on. Um, I don't know if any of y'all ever been in a hurricane or anything like that, and systems go down. 9-11, phones stop working, all kind of stuff stopped working, and people are left in the dark. But if you have a ham radio, um, you know, I'm, I'm gonna work on getting my ham radio license so I can actually get a handle and stuff like that. That's gonna be the people that's, um, the people that's in the know, what's going on, where the issue is. Um, I don't know, I'm kind of going off, I'm going off the beaten path here, but this is just stuff that's been on my heart, been on my mind. Um, I'd never talked about ham radio before, but it's part of, I believe it's part of the homesteading lifestyle. It's part of living kind of off grid. We're on grid now, you hear me say off grid. We're on grid, but as far as you moving out of the city and things like that, this is the mindset that you need to have. Like, hey, when the lines are cut, how do I, how do I communicate? Um, some of these ham radios as well pick up walkie-talkie freq frequencies. So it's all of those things that you need to kind of keep in mind as well. But that's it. Like I said, I'm rambling at this point, just kind of trying to get the information out there. This is what we have. This is what we've been doing over the past couple of weeks. We got the veggies, we got the fruit, we're ready for the pigs, and we're almost ready for the goats. I think we can hit all our macronutrition from right here with inside our fence lines but that's it please like comment subscribe y'all come back now you hear because we getting ready